car salesman of Reddit. What's the most outrageous thing anyone has done while out on a test drive? Friend story. A customer took a Mazda sedan for a test drive and midway pulled over and asked to swap with the salesman to experience the car from the passenger's seat. Just as they were about to drive off again he says he feels sick and can't go on. And thanks for his time. Turns out he just wanted a lift into town. Smart. I had a dirty looking guy with long, greasy hair want to test drive a Cadillac. We had a pre-planned route for test drives, but he turned the opposite way out of the dealership and told me he wanted to go his own way. At this point, he was acting somewhat strange, like nothing specific, just odd mannerisms. We drove a couple miles and I started getting a bit scared that I was going to be on the 6 o'clock news, when suddenly he pulled into an ice cream place. He bought us both ice cream cones and we ate them as he checked out the engine. Then we drove back and he left. It was nice. Not a salesman but once I went to a Mazda dealership to test drive an RX-8. The salesman was a talkative dude, and to make conversation I asked him what was the craziest thing he's seen on the job. He told me he let a guy test drive an RX-8 as well and that the dude absolutely loved it. Before buying it though, he had to go show his mom to see if she would approve. Dude asked the salesman can I go show this to my mom to see if she approves salesman said of course, the dude doesn't come back after a few hours so the salesman calls him up and the dude lets him know he's on his way to New Orleans to show his mom. The dealership was in South Texas, the dude shows up a day or so later and buys the car. Salesman is relieved because he would have been fired and then some. Used car dealer in NJ here. I was selling a 2006 Honda Odyssey XL and the only info I get before a test drive is a driver's license and a phone number. The guy said he knew the area so I'll let him go alone cause we were short staffed. I told him to keep it short. This jerk is gone for 3 hours and ignoring my phone calls. I was about to call the police but I decided to give him another half hour. He finally came back and the van was filled with groceries and some crap from Home Depot. I was peed and he knew it. I'll never forget what he said. I know you're peed, but before you say anything, I'll buy it. I laughed and held firm on the price, which he didn't seem to have a problem with. Grocery bag test can make it or break it. Clearly that car aced the test. I had a car salesman start crying on me when I told him I was still looking and not going to buy the car that day. He broke down and cried. A 30 year old man. He excused himself and went to see his manager came back and cried some some more. He said he thought we connected and was sure I was going to buy the car. A couple of years ago I go to buy a car. At the beginning of the drive I can tell the car salesman isn't looking so well. He's looking a bit loopy and pale. About halfway through the drive he yells for me to pull over. As I stop he opens the door and pukes all over the ground and the inside of the door. The last 10 minutes in that car were the most awkward and worst smelling moments of my life. Not the salesman, but the buyer. In 1989, I took a new Nissan for a test drive. I think his was a 240SX, but I can't remember for sure. This was in a small town in Louisiana. And at the time, you could go on a test drive without a salesman in the car. I drove it about 5 minutes away to show my then GF. On the way back, as I was passing underneath an overpass, doing around 40 miles per hour, a drunk in an old Ford pickup truck blew through a stop sign and slammed into me. I tried to steer away from him at the last second to avoid it, but it was almost a T-bone. The car rolled twice and had most of the passenger side ripped off. I can remember watching the world spin around in slow motion as broken glass flew through the air. Thank god I was wearing a seat belt. The car rolled twice but ended up back on four wheels. The funny thing was, this was one of the cars that talked to you, and even though the car was ripped to shreds, it kept telling me that my key was in the ignition. I took an ambulance ride to the hospital to get checked out, and they brought the car back to the dealership in a paper bag. How great would it be if it was still drivable and you rolled up to the dealership in that wreck? Thankfully this did not happen to me it was one of my salesmen I hired in the past. He had a guy test driver S500 Mercedes, only a few years old at the time. He let the gentleman and his wife have it alone which happens frequently at hireline dealerships. They returned 45 minutes later a bit of a long test drive. They said the check engine light popped on and the abs light and they were scared of the car and left. 
Come to find out they removed some $2,500 worth of parts to fix their S500 at a repair shop a few miles away. Thankfully they were found out and caught. I work at a used dealership. We sell all types of vehicles. But our most popular vehicle in this area is a full size pickup. We always have at least 5 or 10. Early the 2nd of December years ago, we had a dude come in and he was looking around at our cars. He said he was interested in a focus wagon and wanted to take it for a test drive. No problem man, have a good time. He came back about 45 minutes later, said it wasn't what he was looking for, and rushed off. I went to put the car away, and noticed it smelled like pine. The butthole loaded a Christmas tree in the back and took it home, then brought our car back. Why couldn't he have just used a truck? I left the car business a long time ago but one customer will be forever seared into my brain. She came in to trade her 6 year old car in on a new Ford Explorer. I got the car ready and pulled it around front. She climbed in and carefully pulled out into traffic. She asked if we could run an errand. I said sure. We drove to a house a few minutes away. She got out, took a small bag out of her purse and placed a used feminine product on the windshield of a car in the driveway. Got back in the car and said frick that hoe. We drove away. She bought the car and was gone a couple hours later. I will never be the same. Former salesperson here. Probably the craziest would be this guy suddenly yelled let's test out the four wheel drive he veered off the road near the dealership and cut donuts in a muddy field. I didn't really give a crap if he damaged the truck because that's what insurance and lawyers are for. I just felt bad for the underpaid guys in the back who had to clean it back up. The only time I ever got upset with someone and told them to pull the frick over was this old man was test driving a brand new 2008 Corvette. This guy couldn't drive a manual for crap. He could barely get it out of the parking space but he managed to get enough momentum to start rolling toward the road and I nope the frick out. Former salesman here. Most outrageous would have to be almost killing me getting on the freeway and not yielding right off way to an 18 wheeler. This old bag was so close I had to grab the wheel to prevent my death. This guy showed up in a flashy Maserati and wanted to test drive a new Nissan. I don't even remember what it was. Maybe an SUV or something. He drove it to an ATM and withdrew like $200. Then he just gave it to me. That was kind of weird and I wasn't really sure what to do with it. I tried to refuse it but he was insistent. He said it was a tip and just wanted to make sure I was taken care of. We went back and he said he would have someone be in touch to complete the purchase. My manager was trying to get him to stay and just buy it now. The guy broke down and started yelling at my manager about how his son had just died and he had a bunch of other things he needed to do. This was all a long time ago so I don't really remember the details. I was in my early 20s at the time, maybe only 20 or 21, probably about the same age as any kids this guy would have had. I reported the money he gave me because I didn't really know what else to do with it and didn't want it to become an issue if he told other people later. I figured we'd just apply it to the purchase or something. My manager told me to just keep it. He never ended up buying the car and I never heard from him again. Kind of a weird experience all things considered. I sold cars for years and that was the only time someone ever gave me extra money, especially for not buying a car, and the only time I saw someone yelling at a manager in the showroom. <laughs> Took a woman on a test drive, she backed into a fence while turning the car around to go back to the dealership, and when I had to go report it to management when we returned, there was damage, she denied it, and quickly jumped into her car and left. That and the guy who just pulled out slowly into four lanes of traffic without looking. I've had some fun ones but those two stick in my memory. Had a guy show up on a fairly nice Harley Davidson W outer shirt on. Nobody helped him so I offered two. He wanted to drive one of our top end cars. 320k dollars Rolls Royce Ghost. I got a service bag. The ones that protect the seats from the mechanics crime. And let him drive it. We got up to about 140 miles per hour on a public road before I told him he needed to buy it before hitting 150 miles per hour. We went back to the dealership. He went to his bike and wrote us a check. We delivered the car to his house that night and he has been buying cars from the dealership ever since. A year or so ago an old man was test driving an F-150 and when we got back to the lot he insisted on backing it into the parking space himself. 
there was a BMW behind us and it looked like he was going to hit it. So I offered to get out and move it. I'm not gonna hit it, he said. So we're getting awful close. Put the vehicle in park for me. I'm not gonna hit the dang car crunch. I basically said well there it was, and hopped out. Showed him the damage and he insisted he didn't do it. I think he was just embarrassed and panicked a bit. I would have worked something out with him since the damage wasn't all that bad. But he called me a liar. Hopped in his truck and left so I called the police. He wound up paying a couple hundred bucks for the damage. Not my story but at a local Nissan dealer in Queens two very large and intimidating men took a test drive with a salesperson and drove him to the hole an area off the parkway that is literally a hole. They told him to get out and the car was never recovered. He never got it before taking the drive and lost his job as a result. I was showing a car to a guy one day. When I went to go get something, he had opened the hood to look at the engine bay, and he had closed it before I got back. Well, while we were driving on the interstate, sure enough, the hood flew open because he hadn't latched it all the way. It smashed into the windshield, shattering it. We were going really fast, and all of a sudden we couldn't see anything at all. I thought we were goners, but somehow he made it off the road without any further incident. I was also offered intercourse in a car by an attractive older woman, but didn't do it. We had a brand new 2014 Audi S4, and it was right after a snowstorm. The kid test driving it was younger, and came with cash. We were going for a normal test drive when he went into an open hospital parking lot. At that point he proceeded to turn off the traction control and start doing donuts as I hold onto the oh crap handle for my life. After telling him to stop well over 10 times, he stopped and I kicked him out of the driver's seat and drove back. After getting screamed at by our GM, he ended up buying the car. Needless to say he scared the crap out of me. Could have been worse. This sounds like a legitimate test drive. Not a dealer but I had my wife do this. It shocked me and the dealer. So we're looking at full size cars and we look at the trunk. My wife says, wow, you could hide a couple bodies in there he says, yeah, maybe, without warning she climbs in, lays down and says, yeah, you sure can. We'll take it. I looked at him and said, when you weds, his shocked face lost all color and became even more exaggerated. He said, oh, um, well, looks like you got you a winner. The entire time my wife is laying in the trunk rolling and saying, heck I bet we could get three in here. I actually do that every time I'll look at a car as well. Trunk space is important man. No need to buy a car that can only fit one dead escort. I test drove a sports car once and the salesman kept telling me to step on the gas so that I could get a good sense of the power. After ignoring him a couple times, he put his hand on my thigh and pressed my leg down into the accelerator. I instinctively backhanded him with a closed fist and gave him a bloody nose. The rest of the test drive was pretty awkward. I was driving a customer's trade-in. He had an old Subaru Forester. 2002 or something. It was pretty banged up. Test driving it to make sure it rolls and see if there are any noises. Open the driver door to a seriously foul stench. I mean it was like a blast of concentrated landfill juice collected on a hot summer day. This actually isn't uncommon. Lots of people are dirty as heck and your cars show it. So I do the drive. Get back to the dealership and start checking the inside. Rummaging through what looks like 10 year old newspapers in the floorboard. Covered in what looks like coffee stains. Start looking around and there's quite a few coffee spills. Oh well crap happens. I go to move the newspapers back to the floorboard and all I see is a ton of maggots squirming around. Once I noticed the moving ones I realized that what I thought were coffee grounds were dead ones. Layers. And layers of dead maggots. What about vice versa? Years ago I had an old truck that I wanted to trade in on a new vehicle. And the salesman took it for a test drive. When he came back. He said what's that noise I said, what noise he mumbled something vague, gave me a ridiculous offer for my truck, then promptly disappeared for a long lunch. When I tried to drive my truck off the lot I realized what the noise was. The car salesman had put my vehicle up against a curb, revved the engine, and dropped the clutch to test it. He sheared three of the four bolts off the drive shaft. Clutch was good. Needless to say, I bought my new car from another dealer. I used to work at Subaru as a detailer, 
and we had just gotten in the new Subaru Outback with EyeSight. EyeSight was basically two cameras that were used to adjustable speed control, as well as automatic braking if you were too close to a vehicle in front of you or approaching something fast that you will hit. It automatically brakes for you. Anyways, this salesman was an idiot, and wanted to show me how the system works on the lot. I had a sneaking suspicion that something would go wrong. So I hop and he says everything is ready, watch this. So he floors it along the back row of the lot driving right towards another new outback. He was expecting it to break for him when he was zooming towards if. But bam. Drove right into another vehicle head on and smashed up two brand new vehicles pretty badly. His reason. Frick I forgot to turn eyesight on. Oops. Nothing happened to him because he's the manager's son. I work at a Ford Lincoln dealership and this was a few months back but I had an elderly couple come in and ask to take a new Lincoln MKZ out for a test drive. While making a selection to drive they bring up the fact they are very interested in the lane keeping system and driver assist package. I think it's great they are wanting to get some of the latest and greatest technology so I find one with all the features we talked about and proceeded with a drive. Just before allowing them to drive I ask if they have a radio station they want to listen to. They did. It was a spa station on Sirius so I put that on for them and we start the drive. About halfway in I ask why they were so interested in the driver's assist features and they come right out and tell me he has issues passing out at the wheel and wanted to feel safer while driving. I ask how frequent and they say a couple times every time they drive. If I would have had the power to revoke their driver's license I would have on the spot. I recommended not listening to the spa station at this point cause anyone would pass out listening to that music. But we continued on with the spa music and all. On the way back sure as heck he passes out while going 70 on the freeway. No one really notices it at first and the car did a good job keeping it in the lane but then his wife noticed and had to scream and hit him gently to wake him back up. Couldn't believe they would even risk themselves let alone others lives by getting behind any wheel. I made him pull over and I finished the drive for them. About 20 years ago my dad's co-worker was with two Mexicans that wanted to test drive a car. My dad's co-worker was Cuban with blonde hair and blue eyes, so it didn't look like he grew up speaking fluent Spanish. About 5 minutes in, they start talking to each other in Spanish saying something like when we go around the corner is when I get his attention and you shoot him. So the employee opens the door while they're going about 35 miles per hour in a residential and rolls out of the car and takes off. The car sped off and headed for Mexico. They were eventually caught. I guess they were cartel. Those guys don't frick around. I was working at a Dayton, Ohio BMW dealership selling new and used cars. A late 20-something fairly well-dressed gentleman wanted to look at a used Jeep Cherokee. He had credit issues but I called a local credit union and got him approved. I grabbed the keys and we left for a test drive. He asked to stop by his financial advisor's office to get a second opinion. I was slightly reluctant because this office was located in the absolute worst part of Dayton. I agreed since it was only 3 miles from the dealership. He pulls into this parking lot and run inside this sleazy strip club and tells me to wait. Soon all these coke w strippers come out to check out Jim's new ride. These girls were in g-strings crawling around in the car pushing buttons and cranking the radio up. Lil Wayne starts playing and they start grinding on the leather seats. All in broad daylight mind you. Jim finally returns with his financial advisor and tells me the payment is too high. I agreed and knocked another 500 off. He gave me 100 free passes the club. I still don't know what happened to my necktie. My mom went into an Audi dealership and was asking about a car that was dollar sign 80,000. She wasn't planning on stopping by that day, so she was wearing yoga pants and a t-shirt, without any makeup. The car salesman kept trying to push her towards less expensive cars, but she tried them out, and didn't like them nearly as much as the other. When my mom finally asked him why he wouldn't show her the car she wanted, he said, I think that car is too expensive for you. Little did he know that my mom had just empty nested and was looking to finally get a luxury car after decades of buying used suburbans that had seen better days. My boyfriend and I were shopping for a new car. He went to the dealership to pick up the car for a test drive and then came and picked me up at home. We drove it around a bit and decided that we were going to buy it. BF called the dealership to see if it was okay to drive about 30 minutes north to pick up the cash for the down payment. 
The sales guy said no problem. We stopped to get gas. While waiting for the next gas pump to be free, I looked out the passenger window. A woman got into an expedition parked perpendicular to us. Her rear window was a good one. One stroke two feet above the roof of the car we were in. Here reverse lights came on. I started saying no, 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 no while the BF searched for the horn on the wheel. She backed up, crushing the passenger door. BF finally found the horn and she stopped. We both sat there in shock and practically in tears. Then I remembered that we did not yet own vehicle yet. No paperwork had been signed. No money exchanged hands. Luckily the salesman was awesome. The manger of the dealership. Less so. We were able to get a different car and that was the last we heard of it. Since then we've purchased a second car from the same salesman because he was so awesome. A few years ago my dad went to buy a Nissan and during the test drive he got this brilliant idea. He pretended the car was malfunctioning and stopped it. When the salesman got out to see what the problem was my dad sped away as a joke. When he returned to the dealership 10 minutes later there were two cop cars and nobody was amused except me. Not a car salesman, but a friend's uncle is. A homeless man arrived at a dealer and said he wanted to purchase a Corvette. When asked how he was going to pay for it, he replied with I'm going to wake up and the money is going to be there. He then proceeded to pull out a sword. The cops were called. ETC. ETC. <laughs> Happened a few years ago. Worked at a used car dealer and had an older Corvette. It needed a paint job but I still advertised it. Guy called and put a deposit on it and flies into town. He brings his lady friend and they come to the dealership. Car is in the paint shop across the street and they wait all day. Still not done so I tell them I'll take them to their hotel and pick them up the next morning. We stop at a liquor store and I drop them off. The next morning he comes running to my car with some other girl. They are both looking haggard and jumping and he tells me to drive. I'm thinking where's lady friend turns out his lady friend is in love with him and he promised they would drive the corvette across country back home. He's obviously banging her but I sent into a relationship. He tells me the night prior when I dropped him off he started hanging out with the flight attendant from his flight into the town. She ends up going to bed with him and he tells her they are going across country in this corvette. So now I am driving them to the dealership. Pulling over so they can puke their guts out and listening to the flight attendant call work and saying something came up and will be off for a few weeks. So car is finished drying. He buys the car and they drive off. I made my commission. Have a laugh. And then the other girl pulls up in a taxi losing her mind. She woke up. He is gone and left $300 on the table and won't answer his phone. She's going crazy. Calls mom. Gives me the phone. Her mom reams me out. I apologize but explain it's not my problem. She finally left but ended up calling for the next few days seeing if I knew where he was. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.